we've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. So good to be with you this morning. We are grateful as we are entering into actually the last month, this being the first Sunday of December of 2020. It's just amazing with this year of the journey. Not only that what it has been, but what it is and where we are walking. Thank you for being with us today and uh, here from the Eastern Church of God. Uh, as I've started calling this time together with you, that we are together in the Word. And we are just thankful that while we are preparing to open up with this message this morning, that you get your Word, get your Bible, and to be able... I, I'm thankful for the technology, even like I'm getting to be with you. But I think sometimes we get so accustomed to having the Scripture on the screen, and we have all of these different add-ins and roll-ons of things which is wonderful and good but I thought during this time at least while I'm doing the message I know there will be times we need various different things around the message that we can keep you updated on or keep you involved with us in and uh, so I'm grateful for those things and that we are able to give that kind of information but on the other hand when we get into the Word, I would just love for you to be able to have your Bible because I'm believing, I know it sounds very basic, even if it's on your iPhone or your iPad, if you have your Bible open up, at least you'll know where to go to locate the Scriptures that we are in. If the Scripture's on the screen, you'll see it, but then we move on as we move to other locations, but you'll become maybe and perhaps more familiar either with your Bible itself or with a Bible program of how to get to these scriptures, as I believe the Holy Spirit will bring it back to your remembrance. So we believe that that is wonderful that we can have this time together today. So with that said, I want to direct your attention to the Word of the Lord. I want to speak about this morning uh, with a thought uh, concerning about taking you into your promise and with that thought, I want what we recognize the word of the Lord is, I want to open up this morning with you from Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 1. Here in the reading of this scripture, I understand that the promise of God is for us where he begins to speak of what we should be doing. And really, this is where he, Jesus, is directing us today. There are ones of us, if we're not careful, maybe wondering how are we able to be effective today? Because there's so many different challenges going on, even around our church, our worship, around uh, around the world in our church and our worship, not just locally only of us here in Eastern Maryland, but all around the world where we are communicating together this this day. And it can be under different cultures. It can be under even different law settings because of various countries and various directions under different administrations or governments uh, we are here today understanding that the word of god goes beyond all of those barriers isn't that wonderful 
Because we are able to know that the Word of God is never limited by what is going on around us. It can actually penetrate what we would consider un, a, you know, in areas that, is, that we just feel that is impossible to penetrate. But for God, what do we say from His Word? All things are possible. So let's begin Luke chapter 10, verse 1. I hope you've turned there. If you haven't, quickly do so. And let's begin. It says, after these things, in the previous chapter, when it says after these things, Jesus had given direction to the 12 disciples or apostles that they were to be able to go out with power and authority. But now... Jesus has said, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also. And now we know today that he is given unto whosoever calls upon his name. He is reaching out and calling unto us all that we would be what he has given us unto the promise of the Holy Spirit, that we can be able to go into the world and preach the gospel to everyone and here he was beginning that what you may call a branch that he is expanding because it says he appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Now, we need to understand the Lord is able to go now into every area that he would even send you and me. He doesn't send us where, like he did the 70. It was about where he was getting ready to go. He sent them before. Yet, them knowing that they have power and authority in all of these areas is wonderful. But at the same time, we understand that the Lord is calling this morning for you and for me to be able to know that He is here with us because He's not physically on the face of this earth. We're not having to worry about finding Him or Him coming to where we are in a physical sense because now through the Holy Spirit, He's at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is, and He's interceding for us, but that allows Him through the Spirit of God to be able to be everywhere we are and what we are doing for Him. You follow me so far? All right. Verse 2. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great. Does anybody believe that with me today? But the laborers are few. <clears throat> Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag knapsack nor sandals and greet no one along the road that almost sounds anti but when you are on a mission sometimes the holy spirit does not need you to be sidetracked or interrupted or get your thoughts out of the direction that he is directing you at that moment to be going so it says, but whatever house you enter, this is verse 5 of Luke 10, but whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And listen to this. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, you will re it will remain to you. But look at this, verse 7. It says, and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his wages. There's a lot that could be said there for those that are working for the Lord. And if you become a person that begins to limit the blessings of God in somebody's life that, is, that God is called to be out there, 
I need to tell you that there is a double honor. There is an anointing that can come upon you as you bless those who God has raised up to minister and to be those messengers for Him. That's hard for me to say many times because people think I'm trying just to talk about myself when really all I'm doing is trying to just give you the Word of God so you can know those blessings exist for your life. And not to let it be a place of limitation. But he went on to say, after saying, for the labor is worthy of his wages, he said, do not go from house to house. In other words, if they're receiving you there, then you stay there till you know the Lord is finished with you. Then he said, then whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as they are set before you. He goes on by saying, and heal the sick there. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, you go out into its streets and say, now catch this next verse 11, because this is the title of the message this morning. I really have not given you the title yet. But here is verse 11. It says, If they do not receive you from verse 10, go out into the streets and say, verse 11, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. I believe with all of my heart The Lord has laid upon my heart just a couple of days ago as this message began to work deep within me for today to be able to bring for us to share this morning. And here's the title, Dust Free Feet. Can I say that again? I've never heard that title before, but it come to me before daylight as this message was working on me the other morning. Dust Free Feet feet in other words we need to know that we've got to be dust free he wants us in a harvest the lord does he wants us to be going forth and when things start trying to hinder when things start trying to bring confusion when things start trying to slow down what god is sending you out to do and where he said to take them the kingdom of god or the gospel of the good news of jesus and the ones that are going to receive it he said then heal the sick if they receive it then take and go before them and let the needs be ministered to in that place. When I began to think about this, all of a sudden my heart was taken back to a place in God's Word. And here in God's Word, it really began to speak to me. And I want to direct our attention to this place because there was something that happened about what the Lord said In the book of Joshua, first of all, he put something in place with Joshua in chapter 1 when God began to give Joshua his word and his direction. He began to speak to him, and he said in verse 2 of Joshua chapter 1, have you turned there or will you turn there in your Bible quickly? Joshua chapter 1 verse 2, it says, Moses The Lord said to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, the Jordan River, you and all this people to the land which I am given to them. Did I not tell you at the very beginning of this message that we wanted to take this message to the place where we're talking about taking you into your promise? I believe that the harvest of God is our promise. I believe being able to go to find those hearts in the places where they are hungry, where their hearts are prepared, and they're ready to receive the word of the God, word of the Lord, I believe that is a that is the promise of God that we are to go forward. Because we need to have dust free feet. Because when the Lord said this, said, I'm leading you, Joshua, to take the people across the river of Jordan. He said to take this people to the land which I am given to them. That land that he called the land of Canaan. Or the land flowing with milk and honey. 
But in verse 3, it brings about dust-free feet. What do you mean? Verse 3, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, upon I have given you, as I said to Moses. I mean, in other words, that is letting him know, look, you don't have time to sit. You don't have time to just be able to take it easy. It is time to get up. The time has come to move, to lead, to go, and to know that God is there directing those steps because we are following where He is leading us to go. For Joshua, it was to go into the Canaan land of promise. He went on to say to Joshua in verse 5 of Joshua 1, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. What favor God had placed upon the life of Joshua. And he went on to say, As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And we have used this phrase of the verse quite often, have we not? When it says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. But he says, Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong, in verse 7, and very courageous. I believe today God has given us through His same word of direction of clarity that we started out in Luke 10. But the journey that had begun for Joshua here in Luke chapter 1 It become in a continued sense of obedience. In other words, you don't just talk about it. You have to do it. The Word of the Lord says we are to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. We may hear it, but then we have to react upon it. So this morning, I direct your attention into Joshua chapter 3. Because where God had told Joshua 1, I want you to take the people over the river of Jordan. In Joshua chapter 3, it now comes to the point of action. No longer as they were preparing and planning from what God was speaking, the moment came to react. I'm needing you to understand that we are in the day of reaction. We are in the day of Acts. I believe like the book of Acts. That we have to be of that action of the church moving forward like a mighty army. That God is raised up. I'm just not talking about us against the world. I'm talking about God is really for the world through the gospel. Because for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. I feel the Holy Spirit this morning. He's wanting you and me to understand that he is here setting the captive free. He is here still bringing deliverance. He is still here releasing. He is calling you and me to have dust free feet that we are able to go forward. And if there is a place of rejection, he said that we are to shake that very dust from our feet. Why? Because we need and must have dust free feet. Now you know why the message of the word of the Lord with this title had become so strong in my heart for this message today. Hallelujah. Oh, would just somebody say praise the Lord with me right where you are there? Oh, I thank the moderators that are helping me out this morning, but I believe and I ask you today that you would just get very busy by chatting or tapping in the words and just let the Lord be praised and let it be able to continue to go forward of what's happening in our time of worship together this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Here in chapter 3, verse 1 of Joshua It says, Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Akeda, or Achaia, grove, and came to the Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days. 
Do you know we have just completed a 48-day journey that the Lord touched my heart with? We began to take a look. I shared it from the pulpit. I began to speak into some things. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I began to share in those areas, especially this past Wednesday night, was the actual day of the end of the 48 days. It was an interesting moment. If you haven't picked up that message uh, this past Wednesday evening, I encourage you to do so by going on the easterncog.org website and pull up that from the archives and see it uh, this past Wednesday evening of December the 2nd. We titled that message, The Purpose of the Rocket Booster. I know these titles are very unique right now, aren't they? I'm more amazed than anybody else what's coming out of these things. But again, I titled that one, The Purpose of the Rocket Booster. Because 48 days from this past Wednesday was actually October the 16th. And the Lord had touched my heart with four words, and I shared, prepare for the uh, explosion I believe it's an explosion that is still tied into this message this morning. I believe it's like that rocket booster that is propelling us to the next level, that is directing us into the harvest deeper and to go further than we've ever gone before and to accomplish more than we've ever accomplished before and to touch lives and souls. Everything that you and I do around this world, we've got to connect with hearts of the harvest, with souls in this, in this uh, place of which we live, which is an entire world on this earth. So now God tells Joshua in verse 3, and as he prepared the people after three days, that the officers went through the camp, and in verse 3, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant, in other words, where God's presence is. Now, somebody's going to get a hold of this. But when you see where God's presence is, then you will understand that He is there, and that is where you need to go to enter in where His presence is at. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, it says in the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. I wonder if there's somebody this morning that would join with me and let's together go after the presence of God. Let's go after, let's seek His face. Let's do what 2 Chronicles 7.14 has told us. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. We need to seek His face. We need to be able to call upon His name. We need to know that as we humble ourselves and do these things and pray and, and turn Him from the wicked ways, but we seek His face. That's one of those four things there. That he said he would, that he would hear from heaven. He would heal the land. And I believe today that there is a healing virtue going forward. As much as there may be a rejection of God, i got to tell you, I believe God is raising up an army because the darker it gets, the more we see the light that was already shining in the mist. All this darkness is going to do, the darker that it gets, the worse that it may become, it's just going to let the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the ones that will allow the light of the Lord to shine even through them, we're going to be able to follow into the presence of the Lord to what He wants us to accomplish, and we're going to be able to do it, but the way we do it is to keep our feet dust free. One of the most challenging, difficult things is to let the things go that are trying to hold on to you. It is for me. So maybe this is a point of confession for me because I want to bring everybody along with me. I don't want to leave anyone behind. I want to keep every soul intact. But there may be some that we have to just say, Lord, for me to be able to reach the harvest of those others that are ready to receive, 
So I don't miss that opportune time that you have at our fingertips right now so we don't, so we don't miss the visitation of what's happening of your presence and your spirit. We don't need to let the presence of God leave and move from us and get to the other side of what we may call this morning a spiritual Jordan since this story is about the physical Jordan here in Joshua 3. But if anybody had stayed back and did not follow the Ark of the Covenant and did not cross the River of Jordan, once they got to the other side, they would not have been able to have continued following after them because some things were going on. You had to go when the presence of God was moving you to go. Mm. And now He's moving us to go into this harvest here locally, here regionally, here within our nation, and here in the world. He has given us not to sit back, not to wait for another year. Perhaps since we're in, the clo in this place about the virus of the COVID-19, He's not even wanting us to wait till there's a vaccine. He's needing us to go forward. That may be why the Lord is stretching you and me a little bit with a mask. Or maybe you and me a little bit with some of the social distance stuff. But he's saying, I'm giving you what you can still do to accomplish. If you're sitting waiting just for a vaccine, the enemy's going to find something else to hold you back. If you wait for something else, the enemy will find something else. So on and so forth. You hear what I'm saying today. You must be up and about the Father's business. I'm not talking about going out and getting crazy and passing out this around and just being able to be anti-everything. I'm trying to tell you to become pro-God this morning. Come, come, Jesus Christ. Because He's calling you and me to... Hallelujah. To reach you and me so that we can reach others together as well. My time is getting away quickly this morning, so I need to read on in Joshua 3 to get us quickly to a location here of the Word. It began to speak. Let me skip to verse 9. Can we do that for the sake of time? So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here. And hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that He will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the, the Hivites, and the Perez, and the Gergeshites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. That's just a lot of sites, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. It just says in verse 11, Behold the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, of all the earth. Did anybody catch that? Somebody say, praise the Lord, that He's the Lord of all the earth still today. Amen. It says that, behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over for you into the Jordan. Listen, here we go. Here's action. Now take therefore, take for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe, it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off. The waters that come down from upstream, they shall stand up as a heap. Can I tell you? Whatever was on the feet of those priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, when their water got into, whenever their feet got into the water, I should say, that dust was washed clean. Amen? But more happened. It didn't just wash the dust off their feet. When they stepped from the dust into the water, automatically, not just the washing of the water off, uh, the, the dust off there from the water, or with the water, it was that the Water stopped flowing, and it become dry land for a crossing. In other words, the presence of the Lord, as the dust, free feet, standing first in the water, cut it off, 
heaped up. Now there was a place of passing over. Somebody's going to get a hold of this in a second. Because this morning, I believe that same God, that same power, that same glory... It's here to give you the, the direction, the passage, the breakthrough because God is in control. He has us a place on this earth that we can minister for Him but our true hope and our true glory is the Canaan land of promise that He has prepared for us to spend eternity with Him. Paul said, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But I'm here to tell you I'm not waiting to die. I decide that it is for me to live for the Lord daily. That we can be able to be used daily. That we are able to move and, uh, and, and be able to direct what God wants to accomplish through us now. Because even Paul said I'm torn between the two. I have. So I believe today that we have been called. I believe today that we have been directed. I do believe today that He is coming soon. And we are believing right now that you will make with an open heart for the Lord to come in and for the Lord to so direct. So I want us to go to the Lord in prayer and say, Father, for that promise that you have made for us today to go in and take back what the enemy has stolen or things stolen, perhaps. I would prefer to word it, because He has really never taken anything from you. You have only given to Him of what you've allowed, Father. Lord, we ask now that You would so direct, and You would so make a way, and not my will, but Your will be done. So go with each one, Lord, till we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me just share with you briefly, if I may, this morning. To join with us, this is the last month of the year of 2020, this month of December, first Sunday of December. Would you join with me for us, even in a way of giving? I know of this year there are so many more families. We normally have many, many families already that we minister to, but there are so many needs. Through your tithes and through your offering, above and beyond, I just know the Lord we always has, and He will continue to provide what we could even ask or think. God is truly showing and making a way, so I just give you that invitation to join with me. There's going to be things that are already announced on our website. Please go there and see the things coming up of a Christmas musical, making room for, for Jesus, and, and then uh, for our drive through nativity. We have so many different things that are taking place around here of Mickley, but those things we are doing our best to, even especially for the musical, where ones locally and with the driving distance can come and be in it in a life setting with us, but where also you can join with us online for those services. But we're asking that you would go online and would you register if you're within driving distance? We want to reach the capacity that we can reach to in our facility, both performances of a Friday and a Sunday night, that we would be able to do that. And don't just think, oh, I'll watch it from home. If you're able to be here with us, would you help us do that? We want to, and I know our capacity still is within that six-foot distance ratio, and we know that limits a full sold out house but still want to fill the house to at least that capacity that distance would allow us to do it would you join with us in that way may god bless you today is my prayer in jesus name amen and amen till we meet again god bless you is my prayer